Okay, uh, we will we'll start our post-dual press conference. And joining us now is the driver of the number 50 Pit Viper Sunglasses Chevrolet for TNT Racing, and that is Kaz Grala. Raced his way into the Daytona 500 on Sunday. Uh, Kaz, how does that feel? Oh, it's, a, it's a relief, I can tell you that. I, uh, I thought for a while there that we weren't going to make it and squeaked by just on the last lap. Um, I made a mistake early, sped on pit road, uh, shouldn't have had that happen, and um, barely came back. We were running some fast lap times in that line towards the end, and I knew we were going to be close. I thought we might have a chance at catching him, and the timing was just right. Right on the last lap, we got to him, got by him, and that's what we needed to do to make the 500. So, I mean, this is huge for the Money Team Racing, huge for, for Floyd, for Pit Viper. This mattered a lot to us. There really was no option but to make this race, so... We squeaked in by the skin of our teeth, got the, the hiccups out of the way, and hopefully have a, have a smooth Sunday. Excellent. Well, congratulations, Kaz. If you have a question for him, please raise your hand. We'll get you a mic, and we'll start up here in the front. Elise, if you want to... Oh, Amanda's got one. We'll go to Tim and then Denise. Oh, sorry, Tim. Can you go? Uh, Tim Packman, Pub Table Racers. Talk about the swing of emotions from the pit road penalty. So I was listening to you on the, and then when you were passing Yaley, at the end you realized, holy crap, I want to make it here. Um, I went from puke to puke, <laughs> puking nervous to puking excited at the end. Um, I, I was worried as we rolled by him on that last lap. I, I didn't know if he was going to try something, try to like block, shoot down in front of us. There wasn't a hole for him, but I, I was worried about whatever he might try because you got to try. That's all we did and. Uh, whew, that was a relief. When we were catching them, I could see with like two laps to go, I'm like, I think we're going to get there. I really think we're going to get there. I couldn't even believe it, but uh, it worked out. So, uh, yeah, huge relief. I was still asking on the radio even after the check, and I'm like, are, are we in? Are we, are we sure? Was that definitely the last lap? Are we definitely scored ahead? Uh, and, and luckily we were. So really, really thrilled right now. Disappointed in the mistake I made, uh, but at least – Got that out of the way, um, you know, figured out my dash. That was my first time working with this dashboard tonight. So not going to have any any issues with that going forward, hopefully. So, um, yeah, really excited for the team, no matter what way we got in. But, hey, if I was going into the night saying we're going to make it, I'd at least want to do it in an exciting fashion. So it it was that. More exciting than I wanted, but it was exciting. <laughs> Luis, Luis Torres, the podium finish. You made the 500 last year. Was this one as chaotic, knowing the fact you basically went with an upstart team with some of the equipment coming from the Starcom? And just how vital is it for your career to make it under those circumstances and also for Pit Viper as the primary? I, I mean, this was definitely way more hectic going into the weekend because um, we truly started from scratch. We actually didn't get any, um, any hardware from Starcom Racing. So this was truly all brand new, fresh, next-gen stuff. And we had about a about a 30-day period to try to put the car together. So it was hectic going into it. Um, you know, Colleague Racing last year had everything buttoned up. They're an existing team. It was a lot easier. So pretty much turned key, came here and raced. But as far as the duel, I would say it was more hectic this year, at least from a stress perspective for, for me. But both, both years, I have been in the duel, and I've been in. And then I've had something catastrophic go wrong and known that I'm out and I'm definitely going to be out. And then miraculously, exactly what needed to happen happened both years for me to get in. So I apparently I'm lucky in the duels, but I, I would have rather saved my luck for Sunday. Hopefully I'll still have some left in the tank. We'll go up to the press box for a couple of questions. Bruce Martin with Speedsport. Uh, Kaz, how long after you got the penalty did you actually think that you were sunk, that your chances were over? And then how quickly did you recover from that? And the final question is, wh what was the real moment of truth on that last lap that was the make-or-break moment for you to get him? Well, it was really about 12 laps to go that I thought we had a realistic chance of it. You know, when we first blended off after that penalty, we were pretty much by ourselves. We picked up the 41, but just the two of us weren't going to be able to do anything uh, as far as catching the 55. And um, I got I got ingratiated into that line there. Um, Kurt Busch picked me up from behind. That was that was key for me. Um, and I, I needed a pusher. We really couldn't hang on to a line of good cars as the last car tonight, so we're going to probably tweak on it for Sunday and see if we can dial a little speed into it. But 
that that pusher was key, and, and Kurt got us there. And I was looking at the lap times on my dash. Apparently, I knew how to use my dash at that point. Um, and we were running fast. I, I knew what we were running by ourselves and figured that that was what the 55 close to it was running. And I'm like, man, we're, we're really going to be gaining on him. But I didn't know what the gap was exactly. So it really wasn't till about three, four laps to go when I could see them. And I was like, oh, this, this could happen. Um, so, and, and really right down to that last lap, there was no relief because like I said, I, di I didn't know what Yaley was going to try if, you know, if he had an opportunity to try to jump into that line, it, things could have gone sideways really quickly. So uh, the, the key was our line staying formed up and being able to roll on by him on the bottom, not giving him a chance to try to hop down in front of anybody. Uh, that, that was really the defining moment there. And then, uh, then we just had to cruise to the checkered. So definitely took years off my life. Uh, Will Ockmoody, our, our, our team general manager, I'm, I'm sure took decades off of his life because he's even more emotional and nerved up than I could ever be. So, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was way too eventful, but I'm just glad we're here. It's going to be really, really exciting come Sunday to, to be standing down there for the national anthem. We have another one in the press box and then we'll come back down. No more for the press box. Thank you. Go to Terry. The end there. How calm did your spotter help you stay? He kept me calm. I, I was asking him about the gap. I was having him tell me every lap where the 50, when the 55 hit the start finish line. And I was trying to judge how much we were gaining per lap because if I didn't keep my mind busy thinking about the doing the math, then I was just going to drive myself crazy. So I, I, I never gave up and I knew that it was possible. It, I, if it was a lap later, it would have all been for nothing. So it was, <laughs> it was just exactly what it needed to be, no more. Um, but it, he, he definitely kept me calm. I, I've got a new, new spotter up, up on top. His name's Joe White, and I haven't worked with him before, but he did an excellent job in the duel, did everything I needed him to do. It would have been easy, easy to get worked up uh, in anybody's position on our team after, after w speeding on pit road, and, and he stayed dialed in, even keeled, and definitely helped, helped me keep my head in it. And then after how long it took to have this team finally come together, to make the Daytona 500? Does it just show this is why I stuck through it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this is why we did what we did was to race in the Daytona 500. We didn't come into this week ready to accept any other any other fate. So, uh, you know, this, it's big for us being a new team to be able to do this. It's huge financially. It's huge exposure, the marketing. You know, we, we want to run a, a part-time schedule this year. We want to try to run some of the road courses, maybe some of the, the closer... Uh, less travel races so to to have a good showing like this and, and to hopefully have a great showing on Sunday will will go a long way towards helping build this program into what they what they aspire to be a full-time opportunity and I'd, I'd love to stick with them for that Alex um, Alexander with the Charlotte Observer uh, uh, that, that was kind of my first question was just what's the plan for the rest of the season is it are you going to be doing super speedway races also road courses it sounds like it's kind of a mix you have a number I guess yeah uh, maybe super speedway races I'd say less likely it's too much of a risk to the car and, and these next-gen cars are so expensive that you know as a small team we probably have to try to protect our, our equipment um, but obviously this race it's the Daytona 500. It's the biggest race. It's the highest paying race. We got to be here. Um, so I, I would expect probably picking tracks that either particular sponsors want for a schedule or, or tracks that we feel we have the best shot at. Um, I feel like road courses are, are very possibly our, our best chance simply because there's fewer of them. We'll be less behind the eight ball of the other teams that are running full time. For us to go to a mile and a half race, we'll probably be many races behind in, in data of, of the other teams. So, uh, you know, we've got, we've got our eye on, on trying to do the road courses. I, I love Coda. I'd love to do Coda. So that's one we've got circled that we're hoping to do. And uh, I know we've, we've picked up some, some sponsorship for that race already, and, and we're looking to close that out, get the, get the car full, and be, be out there, keep, keep building this program. And then uh, what, what's Floyd Mayweather like as a team owner? Is he, is he planning to be here, I guess, too, uh, for the 500? Uh, I, I don't have official confirmation on it, but that, that is the word on the street is that he will likely be here on Sunday. He was with us on the grid via FaceTime before the duel. He was so pumped up about it. 
Um, he was ready, jacked up, and really confident on, in us. So that was a cool pep talk to get, not not one that I've ever gotten before. So uh, definitely a cool moment for us and, and having that validation that, that he's he's excited about this program. And I can promise you coming out here to a sold-out crowd on Sunday, I don't think anybody could be on this property and not feel that energy and be excited. He's He's really going to get obsessed with this, just like we all are. Any final questions for Kaz? All right. Well, congratulations, Kaz, and good luck on Sunday. Thanks. Thanks, guys.